This is Umar for Box Nation. We're still in New York City. It's uh, Monday. Afternoon. Beautiful day. Yeah. Lovely, isn't it? I'm joined by one of the most viral men at the moment <laughs> on the internet. Who, Henry Garcia? Well, and you. Yeah. yeah. Actually, let's start there. What a crazy moment after the fight. <laughs> yeah, I think it's weird in boxing, isn't it? Because I never actually disrespected Ryan in the build-up. I just said, I think Devin's going to win. And I think like the amount of times I got asked, you know, about Ryan's behaviour or should he be in the fight? And I just said, I think his behaviour is uncharacteristic for Ryan Garcia, which which it was. I also said, we don't know him well enough to know if that's real, what he's like in training camp, but he's got good enough people around him to make that decision. And um, after the fight, it's actually quite funny because before he came, I think two seconds before he walked along, I said, you've got to give big respect for Ryan Garcia. That's actually what I said. And then he popped up. And um, yeah, it was quite a funny moment, really. Like, But it's his father. So you've got to expect he's going to be emotional. And um, yeah, it was a, just a funny moment, really. Like, But it was nice. It, it, was, it was diffused nice and quickly. Mm. When something like that happens, I mean, it wasn't just boxing pages talking about it. I'm mm. just bait, GRM mm. daily, um, flooded yeah. um, things. But... Looking at the fathers in boxing, you know, when you think of Henry now, Chris mm. Eubanks Sr., John Bill, Fu Bill Haney, yeah, John yeah. Fury, it's those guys who are probably the most emotional but cool. understandable. Yeah, 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 absolutely. It's your, it's your son, isn't it? And, you know, I'm sure Ryan's been through a lot in the last, not just three months, but in the last few years. So it's his dad. He's going to want to back his son. And, and what he said in a quote was, you know, he said, I went from acting like a trainer to a father. So yeah, it was good. I actually spoke to him outside as well. Um, just about Boots, because then I heard, actually, they did mention Boots' his name in the presser. But it was quite funny when I mentioned Boots, just the backtrack. And it was great for Boots, because already Boots has had more publicity in the last two weeks than he's had in his entire career. And he's loving it, you know. I mean, that view, that that clip. Someone's telling me that cl clip's done over 50 million views so far. Um, which is mental, because I didn't even think it was that big a deal. But people seem to love it, you know. And... Um, as I said, I accept his apology. Well, I don't think anyone's seen you like that before. On like camera. what? Well, you just gave it straight back to him. No, but someone calls me a piece of well, shit. Of, I mean, no, of course. Yeah, like it doesn't matter. The geezer's like, if he, if he's five six or six six, if someone calls me a piece of shit and I think it's uncalled for, I'm not. I'm not gonna just sit there like a duck. You know, whether I can fight or not is completely irrelevant in that situation. You, you don't, in my opinion, you don't let someone talk to you like that. So I, I wasn't, we were, we were never going to have a physical fight. Well, you know, I don't, I didn't, I never felt that way. But if someone walks past me and says, you piece of shit, it's just the same, you know, sometimes it's difficult when you're at a show and I get that all the time at a show. Oh, I remember like, actually, at, was it Spurs after the it was Joshua like one fight? Yeah. yeah. It's difficult because... People have had a drink, people, not Henry Garcia, but in, you know, in that situation, someone's had a drink, someone's out with their mates, someone's filming it, someone's, and when you walk past and someone says, which was that one, was the Spurs against, uh, the Usyk against um, AJ fight Spurs, I think he's just said that, you oh, fucking pussy. And I was like, nah, not right now. Because obviously, I just, we just lost and I was fuming, so... But that's just what I would expect. Any, anyway, I'd hope you'd do that. You know, it doesn't mean you want to have a fight with someone. And I'm someone that will always probably try and diffuse confrontation because there's always a way to talk around it. And there's always a way for common sense. But obviously you want to always stand your ground in life. So, yeah, it is what it is. But I think that's why we haven't seen that raw emotion from you on camera many times. In fact, it's happened. I mean, that, that sort of thing has happened. It's happened a lot. Lately, actually, I had it with the Better Bev against Callum Smith fight, What's where I it? was in the ring with one of their team, like after the fight, and it was all going off. There was another one recently as well. Oh yeah, that was the <laughs> the Jaime Munguia John Ryder fight, and I was just sitting in the, the 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 inside the corral, and there was a guy behind me, and the, like every few seconds of the fight from the first few rounds. Hey, how'd you like it now, Eddie? Yeah, your boy's getting whipped. How'd you like it now, Eddie? And like, and when he went down, he just started going mental, going, Eddie, you fucking mama, you put... I think he called me a bitch. So I turned around and same same kind of thing. Like, there's only so much you can take. Again, you're in the game where you've got to take a lot of shit. But sometimes, 
you know, I'm not going to let Henry Garcia walk past me and call me a piece of shit without saying something. And all I said was, fuck you. And then eventually we shook hands. But I will always try and diffuse the situation because life ain't worth it. You know, it's not, it's not worth having arguments and confrontations if you can avoid it. Wasn't there someone on the, on the same night who walked past you from Golden Boy? You had, some, you had something to say to him? Uh, I, no, I said that I felt like the fight could have been a draw. And then someone walked past me. As he's walked past me, oh, Eddie. I was thinking, I can't remember what I said. I think you called him a prick. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, look, it's very emotional. I mean, did you see Bernard Hopkins? Like, he... I've never seen a reaction from someone like Bernard Hopkins' reaction. And I don't mind it. I think I like it, and I think fans like it as well. It's an emotional sport. We want to win. We want our fighters to win. So, yeah. What's that, really? I think the, the funny thing with Henry, though, he's like a film character, isn't he? Mm. Well, I nearly called him poor man's Joe Pesky. But I didn't want to. I wasn't sharp enough with that line. But he is. He's like a, like a mobster, isn't he? Like, you know. But... See, like I said, I don't take any offence to it because also, if you're going to... I never felt like I gave it pre-fight. I was never... I don't think I was being disrespectful to him. I just thought he wouldn't win the fight. Um, so I have to stand by that. And I stand by that. I didn't say that for promotional hype. I thought Devin was going to win the fight. I didn't expect Ryan to be anywhere near good enough. And he was. So then when that happens, you have to give him respect. I want to read a post from Andy Clark, whose opinion is uh, well respected within the sport. It was a big performance from Garcia, but it's not a legitimate win because he chose to miss weight and take an unfair advantage into the, into the ring. And that fact renders his win largely meaningless, unfortunately. He can't be classed as a top 140 because he didn't box at 140. Thoughts? Mm, I mean, I think not enough people are taking note of the fact that he didn't just miss weight. He missed weight. I mean, either because he wasn't prepared, didn't prepare properly, or he did it for a physical advantage. Either way, he didn't fight under the rules of the contest. However, once you agree a deal after there for the fight to go ahead, it's fair game. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the original terms of the fight were not honoured by Ryan Garcia. But once they are honoured, i.e. the contract is rewritten, you can't, I don't think after the fight you can start moaning about the fact that he came in overweight. You chose to accept that fight and those terms. Can I ask why Devin's team didn't enforce a, a weigh-in for Ryan on, on the Saturday on fight day? Um, we felt they should have. Um, but maybe Ryan Garcia wouldn't have. It's very difficult in that situation. You have to make a call whether you're happy for the fight to go ahead. Now, when someone is that far overweight, there's a couple of things that you generally look for. Number one, you don't want him to rehydrate to a number that is going to be huge on Saturday night. I will also say Devin rehydrates to huge numbers. So I think... Um, can you sign for that, Winks, as well? Yeah, Thanks. And then... I think what, you, so firstly, you need to make sure that someone doesn't rehydrate to huge numbers. Again, Devin does, but that doesn't matter. It ain't Devin's problem. So when you ask someone to rehydrate, it's not you both weigh in the morning. It's you weigh in the morning. You're the one that came three and a half pound over. I don't have to re -weigh. but even if you do, then you do. The second one is a financial penalty which is fair cop because you, 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 you've got such a huge physical advantage now going into the fight. I want to be compensated. And that bit was taken care of. So I don't know whether, you know, Bill felt that Devin rehydrates so much anyway. Also, being honest, there is a chance Ryan would say no. The last thing someone wants to do when they've tried to make weight is have to hold that weight for the morning. And obviously he went through that in the tank fight as well. So I don't know. I feel like when I saw him in the ring, when we were in there, I thought, oh my God, he's massive, massive. Like, look at the pictures of him and then in the tank fight, did you see it? The post that yeah. was there. I mean, it's like, it's a different person. So, yeah, I think he was at a huge physical advantage, but it doesn't matter because you accepted those terms. 
And I don't think I don't think you should go back now and say, oh, you. I mean, that's probably what I should have said to Henry Garcia. You know, I'll give you respect, but your son didn't honour the, the the agreement of the fight. Three and a half pounds is a huge amount of weight, but we see it. I've been on the other side of that. I've been on both sides many times, you know, and I've been in those conversations, as I said, 50 times. How many rounds did you actually give Ryan apart from the, the knockdown rounds? Only really the rounds with the knockdown, honestly. Like, I, at the end of the fight, I, I squeezed Dev in the 12th round to have it very close. Well, you didn't give him the first round, right? The first round, sorry, yeah. So after like five rounds, when was the knockdown? Sixth? Seventh, was it sixth? Seventh. Seventh. Okay, so I know for a fact after five rounds, I did 4-1 to Devin, which I think actually most, a lot of people did. The seventh was massive. That was the knockdown with the point. Correct. So that turns into a 10-9 round. I don't know if anyone actually gave it a 10-8. I doubt it, but 10-9. Then there was a knockdown in the 10th and 11th. Yeah? Yes. Well, those two were just game changers. I mean, up to that point, I'm screaming at Devin saying, do you know what? It was actually at the end of the ninth round, I thought Devin's legs started to look really weak. And I thought, blimey, we've got three rounds left in this fight. But I was screaming at him, all you've got to do is just win the rounds and just box. Because if, even if you stay on your feet here and you lose the last three rounds, you win the fight. And I think actually nearly all scorecards would have reflected that. It was the 10-8 rounds twice that were just a killer. So, um, you know, how many rounds did I give him? 10, 11, 7, and 1 for sure, right? And then, I don't know, not, not many others. But, I, you know, I'm watching it from ringside, and obviously I'm a Devin Haney fan. So, put it this way, when the final bell went, I knew Devin Haney hadn't won the fight. I thought, could we squeeze a draw here? And the 12th was quite an important round. But one judge saw it like that, the others didn't. To Devon's credit and Bill's credit, absolutely mm. no excuses made. Yeah, pro proper people. And by the way, Devin showed unbelievable heart in there. I thought it was a really poor performance from him. You know, and when I was in the change room, I said to him, I don't know if it was the weight, you didn't look strong in there tonight, your punches didn't have any zip in them. Did Ryan get to him mentally? No, I don't think so. He, he buzzed him in the first round. Um... And obviously, after that, I thought Devin was boxing nice. He was in control of the fight, wasn't he, through the halfway stage? It's just that left hook kept yeah. landing. And that is that is poor from Devin. You know, you know Devin that Ryan's left hook is his shot. You don't keep dropping your right hand. And he kept doing it in the fight. Every time he leaned in, his right hand dropped and he got caught with it. And you know, But I'm proud of him because I, think, I thought he showed unbelievable heart. And he's still WBC world champion. You know, So he's in a great position. I mentioned the fact they made no excuses because you know what it's like on, on social media. Um, certain fans of fighters will, will look for things and a lot's been made about Devin's boots on the nights mm. that he was wearing. Your thoughts on that? Look, if you win, no one even talks about his boots, do they? Like, those boots are designed for him. By the way, I saw him putting them on in the changing room. They're not just the ones you get out of the shop. Do you know what I mean? They're like There's like a boxing boot inside there, you know proper orthopedic pack like it's just but sometimes a defeat will make you reflect a lot on your preparation on the people around you you know I mean I have to be honest like you know there's a lot of people around these fighters Ryan the same you know it's not normal to have 50 or 60 people in a dressing room or Further than that, an orchestra in the dressing room, yeah. if you're Ryan Garcia. <laughs> but, you know, and as I said in the build-up, perhaps this newfound mentality from Ryan Garcia will help him in boxing. Because before, maybe he was a little bit emotionally weaker. And now he's just seems like he doesn't really care. So who knows the truth? But I thought he boxed really well, Ryan. And, you know, he, he's already a star, but it was a massive night for him. What about the referee's performance? Well, there's a couple of things. I mean, firstly... The point deduction, I thought, was harsh on Ryan Garcia, if I'm honest. He punched him in the clinch to the head, but hadn't been doing it repeatedly during the fight. I felt like Devin held a lot when he was hurt. I mean, you're going to, but probably should have received a warning for that. Point, I mean, point comes after a warning, in my opinion. And I thought Ryan Garcia continuously turned his back in the fight. 
You know, there's one thing doing a shoulder roll. There's another one just literally turning your back so that your 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 face and body is actually facing that way when the fighter's there. And the only thing Devin can do is punch the back, really, because it's the only target that's available. So, yeah, I, I'm not sure it was a bad performance from the referee, but I think there's always um, moments that you can look at. Devin held a lot when he was hurt. I thought the point was a little bit harsh for Ryan. But I think, actually, if there was going to be a point for Ryan, it should have come from repeatedly turning his back. But it's a fight. Like, you know, that's what you have to understand. Of course you're going to hold if you're hurt. But you've got to do it smart. By the way, Ryan held repeatedly from rounds four, five, six, seven. You know, Devin was tying him up early doors. And then Ryan just held and held and held. But then when he hurt Devin, he didn't want to hold. Well, as Henry Garcia reminded you, he's now done Luke Campbell. Mm. He's now done Devin Haney. And you've got two fighters linked with Ryan Garcia now. Uh, Boots Ennis, which Ryan's actually welcomed. Mm. Um, and Conor Ben. So we'll start with Conor Ben. Um, of course, you've seen the back and forth. Mm. Is there actually legs in that? Listen, it's a massive fight. Commercially, it's huge. Um, you know, I think for Ryan, the first thing he has to do is decide if he's actually moving to 147. Let's be honest. Regardless of whether it was a bluff, whatever it was, probably wasn't the greatest training camp in the world he had in terms of discipline. So can he make 140? If he can, I'd like him to fight Subriel Matias. Of course, they won't fight him. If they go to 147, I'd like them to fight Jerron Ennis. Of course, they won't fight him. Conor Ben, they may, they may fight, you know, and, and we'd be bang up for that fight. But Ryan's a star. Ryan's going to call the shots now. You know, it really, in terms of whoever he fights, I mean, the Haney rematch is a massive fight as well. So Ryan's got loads of options, really sitting pretty. And I have to be honest with you, I think he's hilarious. I mean, I've been watching his stuff since the fight. Absolutely, like, we need characters in the sport. As long as he's okay... Genuinely, like as long as he he's okay and it's not something that, you know, people are concerned about his behaviour and he's just in control of his emotions, great. I think he's utterly entertaining. But, you know, I hope the people around him now can stay close to him and just make sure he's okay. I think this social media world, this like life under a microscope, you've just got to be careful because you can feel like it's okay. You can feel like you're in control of your emotions and things can turn south real quick. So hopefully he can enjoy himself. And, and he's an asset to the sport, really. And I know there was a lot of people, even after the fight, you know, didn't like what he did. But he won. So congratulations. Two million dollar bet on himself as well. I'm not sure whether that's true. But it's a good story. And then, of course, the other one, Jaron Ennis. Okay, you feel like Ryan won't take that fight. It's not just Ryan. It's no disrespect to Ryan. It's just, look, we got to build Jerron Ennis to a place where the value to fight him is there. Everybody knows how good he is. It's not like some people don't actually rate him. Everybody rates him. They know, it, but but they'll fight him if the money's right. But we got to build Jerron to that place. And it's been a great start. The announcement by us, the stuff with Henry Garcia, hopefully we get his first fight locked in soon. And we're going to build him to that place. But listen, if anyone's ready to fight him, oh, we're, we're all in. Well, if you go on Michael Benson's page, he's just put out uh, his excellencies also yeah, in New yeah. York. Wants to make Terence Crawford be Jerome Correct, yeah. uh, Ennis this year, which is mm. great news for yourself and Jerome. Yeah, he told us. You know, He told us uh, when, when we had a meeting with him, he would like to make that fight later in the year. It's one of the best fights in boxing. And, and Jerome Ennis looked his excellence in the eye and said, we're all in. What his excellence has done has been remarkable mm. so far already, but the fights that he's talking about for the rest of the year and potentially early next year, it's just like one after the other. It's like mm. a conveyor belt. Yeah, I mean, obviously, look, I think we kind of forget a little bit. We've got four weeks till Fury Usyk. Yeah, correct. Less three weeks this Saturday? Three weeks this Saturday. Yeah. Five or six weeks till the... 5v5. Five five. Yeah. I mean, plus then we've got the big event coming in America, which will be announced on Wednesday. And then we've got the big event, hopefully, in Wembley, which he's already talked about. And then we're back to Saudi Arabia for Riyadh season. So, like, and, and all the fights that he's talking about are just incredible. So it's very, very exciting times. And, you know, we're all, everybody involved is just riding a crest of a wave for, for what's happening in the sport. It's funny, when we talk about the 5v5, we don't even mention better BFV. I know. I mean, I think that's probably the best fight in boxing. So, as I said, June 1st, you know, Bivol better be having the 5v5. I think it's the best card we've ever seen. Okay. Eddie, appreciate your time in New York. Any closing comments on Saturday night? No, all good. Um, congratulations to Ryan Garcia, Henry, 
And, and also congratulations to Derek James because, I, you know, whether Ryan was bluffing or whatever he was, I'm sure Derek has had a lot of patience um, in that training camp. And I thought his performance in the corner was very, very good. And, and I think also we should show big respect to Devin Haney that never showed any quit regardless of how hurt he was. And he was a true warrior on Saturday night. Thank you very much, Eddie Cheers.